Roach's theorem tells us that if we have two functions, f and g, which are both analytic inside and on a simple curve c, and if the absolute value of g always is smaller than the absolute value of f on this curve c, then we know that the functions f and f plus g will have the same number of zeros inside of c. This theorem can be quite useful when we want to determine the number of zeros for a function inside a region. So let's continue by doing an example, so you can get a feeling on how to use it properly. Let's say we want to determine the number of zeros for this function h here. Inside the region, absolute value of c is equal to 2, which we can illustrate as a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 2. To be able to solve this problem, we first have to split the big function up into two smaller ones, which we are going to call function f and function g. And the important thing here is that the function f should be equal to the term in the original function that dominates on the disk, since we want the absolute value of f to always be bigger than the absolute value of g on the disk. So let's try to determine which term that dominates on the disk. So I will do a table here with all the terms and the term's absolute value on the disk. The first term is c raised to the power 7 and its absolute value on the disk is going to be 2 raised to the power 7. The next term is minus 2 c raised to the power 3 and its absolute value on the disk is going to be 2 raised to the power 4. And the last term is going to be 7, and its absolute value on the disk is going to be 7. So from this we can see that the term that dominates on the disk is the term c raised to the power of 7. And it is therefore going to make up our function f. And the rest of the terms are going to make up our function g. The next step is to check that these two functions fulfill the theorem. So first we have to check that both of them are analytic, which they indeed are, since we don't have any singularities inside or on the disk. The next step is to check that the absolute value of f is bigger than the absolute value of g on the disk. The absolute value of a function g on the disk will be equal to the sum of the absolute values of each term. And we got these numbers in the table above. So this just becomes 7 plus 2 raised to the power 4, which is equal to 23. And the absolute value of the function f is the same thing as the absolute value of c raised to the power 7, which is equal to 128. So that means that the absolute value of the function f is bigger than the absolute value of a function g on the disk. And therefore, by Roche's theorem, we can say that the function f and the function f plus g, which in fact is equal to the function we started with, the function h, have the same number of zeros inside the disk. So instead of determining how many zeros the function h have inside the disk, we can instead determine how many zeros the function f have inside the disk. And this is so much simpler, because the function f have seven zeros inside the disk. The zero is, in fact, zero, with multiplicity seven. And therefore, by Roche's theorem, the function f plus g, which is equal to the function h, also have seven zeros inside the disk. Thanks for watching.